you can hear me. Let me see if it works. Okay. 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 Good. Um, I'm gonna try this this way. My computer. Maybe not being a friendly little critter right now, but you bet that I'm gonna draw these mushrooms because that was what I said after you today, and you can't stop me from drawing that easily, computers. So I hope this is working. It says I'm live, and uh, this time it actually works when I put my hands on the paper, and I can actually see on my phone that it is not locked up. So I'm hoping everybody can see and hear. All right, so because I don't think anybody could hear the original intro. I am sorry if you did and you can hear it again now, but we're gonna start this again from the top because I think this is working now. So this is my very first Twitch stream ever. So thank you for being here. Uh, I really appreciate you showing up. Uh, streaming art is something I've wanted to do for a long time. So I am glad that I finally can do this. And I, I've been drawing for a long time. You probably have seen some of my art on Instagram or something if you're watching the stream. Um, so yeah, I, I like making both traditional and digital art. And I am gonna, once I get some more, like I need a drawing tablet and stuff, but I do wanna start doing some digital art and then streaming that as well. So I will start doing that. But I also am a big fan of traditional forms of art. And uh, recently I got a set of pastels. Um, and I only have done, I think, one drawing with them so far, but pastels are fun. So, because of that, um, I'm going to be drawing a mushroom forest idea. It's something that I've had this idea for a long time, not a long time, but maybe like a month or so, and I've wanted to draw it, but I kept being like, oh, I could draw this on a stream, and because I'd never done a stream before, I was like, okay, I'm like, uh, what if I'm like... I, I just kept procrastinating on it, I think, because it was like a big new thing and I felt like I didn't know how to do it. So I put it off and I put off drawing the mushrooms and yeah, so today, like in the past couple weeks, I kept being like, okay, this week is going to be the week that I actually like do the stuff that I want to do, actually start a stream and do art. So I kept telling myself that week after week, but this week I was like, no, I'm really going to do it this week. Because once I cross that line, then it won't be like this big thing, you know, looming above me that I will feel like I don't know how to do because I'd be like, I've done that before. I know what's happening. So, let's see. <laughs> okay, cool. So, um, anyways, we're going to get started. If anybody is watching, uh, just let me know if you can hear what I'm saying. Because I'm assuming that because it's not locked up, you guys can probably see what I'm, what I'm doing. Um, just let me know if you can hear me. So, yeah, let me see. Alrighty, so, we're going to start out. Oh, by the way, the mushrooms I'm going to be drawing in here, uh, I got the idea for drawing them because of the arc in the Adventure Zone, where, um, oh, the Stolen Sentry arc, that's which one it is, and in one of the parts of, I think it's like the second or third episode, um, they go to a little land that's filled with like toxic mushrooms. And that's like, it's just a big mushroom forest and the mushrooms are glowing. And as soon as I heard that, I was like, I want to do something like that. It's not going to be the same. I, I don't want to draw a toxic mushroom forest. Um, but I'm like, but I do want to draw glowing mushrooms. So it's not a picture of the thing from the Adventure Zone, but it is just based on that. So, I'm gonna use pastels. I, I for now, like to use um, colored pencils, especially because I'm new to pastels. Of, of just like, so I can kind of sketch out what I'm drawing. And like, maybe some better pastels, I won't involve pe colored pencils so much, but for now it's like, it's helpful. Give me just a second. Cause... Okay. Hello. Okay. Um, if anybody can hear what I'm saying, just let me know. Because again, that's one thing I, I gave it permission to talk to use my microphone. So I just want to make sure that like you can hear what I'm saying. So if somebody wants to just make sure that's working, that would be cool. But all right. 
strong. I'm not quite so good at perspective type drawing yet, but I do want to kind of want to work on getting better at that. Okay, good, good. I'm glad that you can hear me. That was a big thing I was worried about. So, yeah, I'm not I'm not that good at perspective drawing yet, but I am good at kind of like it's one of those things I want to learn how to get better at. So obviously I have to practice it to be able to get better. I'm just kind of sketching where the various mushrooms are going to be. That's the thing about drawing is like when I start out, I have an idea in mind usually like, oh yeah, I want to draw something that looks like this. It doesn't always work out that way. Alrighty, you have fun cooking. Um, usually when I'm drawing, I have like, it may not come out the way I'm picturing it in my head quite. I think as long as it comes out in a way that looks nice, I think that's the most important part. Because sometimes I have a concept, I don't know if this happens to, like if this is something that anyone else who draws can relate to, but, like, I'll have an image in my mind of what it should look like, but what it looks like is either something way beyond my skill level, or is something that's just not physically possible. And that just happens sometimes, I'll picture like a graphic design thing, and it's unfortunately something that's not physically possible to exist in the world because like the proportions of it plus that size of font wouldn't be readable in real life things like that and like me when I'm picturing it and like this makes perfect sense and I go to make it in real life I'm like what is happening and I'm like wow cool this thing I've been like planning this drawing based on can't actually happen so that happens sometimes and like part of being an artist I think is learning how to adapt the things in your mind to something you can make and also like sometimes I'll have a design for something and it's it's a far beyond my current skill level or it just involves something which is a tool or technique or something that I do not know how to use and then because I pictured it I'm like no this is a thing that needs to exist I'm going to make this thing then I'll I'll improve my skills to the point of being able to do the thing. That's always a lot of fun. Improve my skills to the point of being able to make what I'm trying to make. Just give me just a second because I just want to make sure that I let everybody know that the stream has started. Give me just a second. Yeah, I, po I posted it before. It would still be the same link. Okay, cool. Anyways. So. Um, but yeah. So sometimes it's just a matter of improving my skills to the point where I can do the thing that I'm picturing. Uh, like one design that I did for Jar of Rebuke was a deer that like a deer head shape that had words on it uh, because I work I'm the graphic designer for the podcast Jar of Rebuke um, you might if you if you see my stuff online like if you follow me on Twitter or Instagram or whatever you definitely see me talking about it um, I talk about it a lot because I love it um, but like in making the deer the face it was the kind of thing that it would be pretty easy. Like, I found a tutorial for making something like that in Adobe Illustrator. Problem, I don't have Adobe Illustrator. I've never used Adobe Illustrator. And it's one of those things I, I want to, or I mean, or something like Illustrator. It doesn't have to be Adobe. I've never used any program like that, so I'm like, I don't know what's happening here. Um, and I tried to download some free ones, but the deadline for when I want to get this done, plus the learning curve of trying to figure out all this stuff, just wasn't gonna work out so I'm like okay with Photoshop I need to find out how I'm gonna make this thing and make it look cool and make it look the way that I'm hoping it looks 
So what I ended up doing, because like the whole point of that particular drawing was that Adobe Illustrator, um, you could make the words in Illustrator and then like grab them with a tool and stretch them to fit the shape. Because I wanted to do kind of a typography thing where it had the words, but they were stretched to fit the silhouette shape. But that's a problem when you like, I didn't see a way to do that in my Photoshop. So it was kind of, it was going to be an issue. But then I was like, okay, we're going to old school this because I don't have this fancy application. I don't have time to learn how to use a different application. So because of that, I'm like, okay, well, what we're going to do is we're going to print out the silhouette, but like with an outline on it. So it's like a coloring page, basically, of the silhouette that I want to use. Then I will hand draw the letters in pencil and then trace over them in Sharpie so that they will they'll look good and they'll fit the shape the way it's supposed to and I can play around with them with a pencil until I get it perfect. I can play around with it and get them to um, you know have have the right shape that's supposed to match up the way it does. So I got that to happen. And then I scanned it and then kind of digitized the lines, cleaned them up a bit in Photoshop. So I did that. Here's some real short little mushrooms. This is the little steps leading up to the door, by the way. But yeah, so I, I manually at, drew the letters in there and then scanned it and then, you know, changed the stuff in it. I'll have to try. I'll have to try doing that. Hey, Casper. I was going to post the link again, but I'm using my phone to stream this because that's the only way you could get it to work. So because of that, I, I couldn't say anything about the fact that it had started and it, it was actually working this time. But yay, I'm glad you're here. But yeah, I'll have to try the thing, uh, rasterizing the text layer. Um, I mean, I... I could arrange the letters, but I don't think I had the degree, because I did try, I don't know whether I rasterized them or not, I did do something where they were like a layer, and I could manipulate them, but I still didn't have the degree of control over manipulating them with like multiple different points beyond just changing like the height and the width of them. I wanted to change the letter shapes themselves, and that was something at the time, like I couldn't see how to do that with the Photoshop. So I ended up doing a harder way, but it worked out okay. But I will have to, to look into that next time, because I'm sure there's probably some more stuff in Photoshop that I haven't done yet um, that could help with stuff like that, because I do really love typographical, or whatever the word would be, art like that. And I think it's cool to have, like, here's a drawing, and here are also words that match the drawing. Okay, so kind of the basic of how this drawing is going to look and basically what I want to do I want it to be nighttime okay I'm going to also draw the shape of a moon up here because before I started the stream I decided that there was going to be a moon because it's nighttime and I like I love the moon very much the moon is awesome and there's going to be a nice yellow moon up there anyways so the moon is the source of light the mushrooms are also glowing and because of that, uh, the mushroom caps are going to be brightly colored and then it's going to be darkness around them. So I'm hoping it has ultimately a cool effect. And then there'll just be sky stuff up here. And again, I'm new to pastels. So if I am not doing something right with pastels or if you know about pastels, uh, definitely free, feel free to tell me about pastel stuff. Um, because it's again, I. I've used a lot of art mediums, but I've never done stuff with pastels a lot. Like beyond just as a kid with those art kits that I think everybody probably got at least once from a relative for a holiday or something that had like the pastels and the little tubes of acrylic paint and a lot of stuff that doesn't like, I feel like most people who get those don't really know what to do with all the stuff. I know that I didn't know what to do with most of the stuff in those kits, but I was still just excited because it's art supplies. So 
I have used pastels previously, but I like didn't know what I was doing. Ah, uh, thank you, Casper. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm also hyped to see it. It's something I've been thinking about for a while, and I was like, oh yeah, this would look cool with pastels. But it's mostly just me playing around with pastels. But yeah, I'm. I'm also really hyped to see it. I'm hyped for you to be able to see me drawing it. Because that's the thing, like, and that's one thing I like about, for example, like on TikTok and stuff, seeing people with their art streams and their, I mean, both their art streams and also their, like, um, like fast forwarded redraws and stuff. That is cool because I like, it's cool and also kind of educational to see people drawing stuff because you're like oh that's how they got it to look that way and then like it makes sense so when you're looking at the end result like the speed draw that that's the term I was trying to think of when you see the speed draw then you're like it makes sense like oh that they got this cool effect because they did this this and this and also it does help because you're able to see stuff like I have never used clip studio paint but I do know a lot of people that I'm watching do the speed draws and stuff are using that so it's educational for me because that's an app that I would like to learn how to use um, especially as I get a drawing tablet and things like that like I know a lot of people use drawing tra tablets use that um, so I want to it, like it's cool for me to be like oh okay they draw it like this like just to see their technique that's neat for me because then like I'm a really visual learner and that's always been either watching people do stuff or uh, actually like doing stuff and being guided through it. That's the best way that I learn. I'm, I'm okay with learning stuff in like a audio type way. Um, and I'm okay with learning stuff by reading. But sometimes it's a bit harder like reading because I have ADHD sometimes it's hard. If it's like, if it's something interesting and fictional, sometimes I don't have too much trouble with it. But I can have, you know, a bit of trouble just trying to focus on it in the first place, much less also retain what I'm reading. And it doesn't, it also doesn't help if I have, like, if I can't conceptualize and picture what I learned. Because, like, well, reading actually can help because I can picture the written word on the page. And I can picture how it, like, I can remember, like, my brain takes a snapshot of a picture of like the what the page looks like and then I can look at that snapshot in my brain and be like oh okay cool that is what the text said probably people explaining stuff verbally is the hardest way for me to get information because again ADHD sometimes when people talk to me it seems like they are not speaking a language I've ever heard before and I have no idea what they're saying and I have trouble with that. So, like, people explaining stuff to me, I have to, like, picture the words manually in my head. It's not always very easy. So, because of that, it it's, like, not the best way for me to learn. I can learn and remember stuff that people tell me, but definitely not my preference. So, watching people make art stuff is helpful for me because... Rather than somebody, like, explaining it, I can conceptualize and kind of, like, manipulate the images in my mind of being like, oh, they did this technique and then this happened. That's really helpful for me. So, because of that, I like watching art videos as a way of learning art techniques. And I also have a book that was due back to the library, so I had to take it back but a book about art techniques. It's like 300 page book, but it's like got so many pictures in it. So it's easy to read still. I've learned a lot of art stuff and that's actually like one thing that inspired me to get the pastel set. Um, is like, I wanted to, I wanted to be able to learn more art techniques and like find art techniques. Cause like obviously there's a lot of stuff I want to learn with digital art, but there's not as much stuff that, I mean, like, I know how to use Photoshop and stuff, so I understand, like, the concepts of it. 
but regardless of what type of art I'm doing, having digital, I mean, having um, techniques and stuff like how does shading work, stuff like that. Stuff like that is really helpful, I think. Rather than me just sitting there being like, I don't know what's happening. Because, like, con a lot of concepts used in traditional art, beyond, like, the physical way the materials work, a lot of that stuff also applies to digital art. Because that's one thing for a long time, drawing things that were three-dimensional. Drawing people. Drawing, like, um, perspective. Drawing... Drawing anything, you know, that basically wasn't just two-dimensional, flat coloring. Not something I was as experienced in. And, like, it's just something I'm kind of just starting to work on now. So I'm definitely not an expert in it. But it is nice to have that kind of, like, the book taught me a lot of stuff. Like, I would see the, a picture and, like, it had tutorials and stuff in it. But even beyond the tutorials, it still just had a lot of good stuff about different art things and I could like because of how it showed the pictures and how it talked about what was going on in the pictures I was able to be like okay cool this happened this looks this way because the artist did this technique and then being like I could replicate that technique if I do this so it being presented in a visual format like that even though it's not obviously a video or anything is still helpful because I'm able to to see that because like seeing examples of stuff is the easiest way for me and my brain to conceptualize things like I've always with music ever since a young age I've been really good at playing music by ear I uh, when I went to college for just one semester because it was dual enrollment and I got to do that for free um, I in that time started taking a music class because I wanted to go to college for music because I was like I want to be a musician and I'm gonna learn how to do music stuff but the thing is like the class focused heavily obviously on reading music which is great and reading music is a great skill I have a lot of respect for people who read music it's just one of those things that was really hard for me the whole time because it to me I couldn't conceptualize it as actually what was happening like what the notes were and stuff I was just looking like this paper thing is not computing to anything in my brain and I have no idea what it means but I'm being quizzed on it <laughs> so I, that was really hard and for me to like spot read music was very difficult what was easy for me though was like my dad also knows how to play music so he would play a song on the piano for example and I would watch him play it and I would because I knew what notes on the piano were by looking at the different keys then like one time my dad played a version of the song Come Sail Away by the band Styx from the 70s and everything so I watched him play it and he was like wasn't a complex version of it. He did the melody with the right piano playing hand. In the left hand, he did, like, really basic chords. I knew about chords and stuff. Like, it wasn't that I had never played the piano before. But he was, like, he, he was just playing it for me so I could see how it was played. He wasn't, like, trying to teach it to me. And I was just watching him. And then, because I had in my brain marked down all the chords and stuff he was playing, then I was able to... Like, in doing that, I was able to, like, I sat down at the piano right after he got up, and he went in the kitchen to start making dinner. And I just started playing that song the exact way that he had played it. Because I'd watched him play it, and I was like, oh, that's how you play it. Uh, I don't know if anybody here has seen the Elton John movie, uh, Rocket Man, but the scene at the beginning of that, when young Elton John goes into the college and the teacher's playing the piano and then he copies what she was playing and then she's like play the rest of it and he's like that's where you stopped that was like kind of how I was not in so much of a you know like piano virtuoso type way but in the sense of 
like me watching people play something and then being able to play it and they'd be like, whoa. Even though to me it was just like, oh, I remember the order of the chords and like I can picture it in my mind and conceptualize it. So that is very much the way that I learned best with anything that I've learned. And I think like knowing how you learn best is helpful and important because if somebody's like trying to teach you something but they're doing it the wrong way you you may not learn it just based on that kind of like um i can't remember exactly what the book is called but the a book about the five love lang languages it might just be what it's called but like the quintessential book on it with that in that book and like the concept of the love languages in general is that like people have love language and that's the best way that like they perceive and receive affection but the thing is like because everybody has a different like one of the five it you could be like really loving to somebody in one way but they wouldn't perceive it as like feeling loved because it wasn't the way that they perceived and conceptualized love so for example like if your love language was giving gifts but their love language is quality time you could give them a bunch of gifts and they'd be like oh cool this is gifts but they like wouldn't feel loved because that wasn't their love language because you weren't giving them quality time which is like how they conceptualize and understood love so it's kind of like that like I think that's important even I think understanding kind of like whether or not you prescribe the whole like love language theory or not I still think there are definitely benefits to be gained by like what kind of stuff makes you feel appreciated and like in that it can be helpful even just for friendships and stuff of how you show appreciation to your friends and how your friends show appreciation to you because again any kind of interaction you have with anybody if you're just sitting there and like you're not showing it to them the way that they conceptualize it you're not communicating with somebody the way that they conceptualize being communicated with you could be doing a really good job at that but it's not going to feel like a good job to them not because they think you're you're not trying to do it but just because it's not how they conceptualize it so because of that i think understanding your learning style is really important because even like at a, any job or career or whatever you have not that all places will respect this even though they should but if you're able to say like hey or even if like you don't have to be like hey my learning language is i have to be showing stuff but if you know that that's how you learn best then you could ask for like can you demonstrate that for me and like hopefully your workplace respects that not a guarantee of it oh hello nessa Oh yay! I'm glad that she likes the mushrooms. She will she will definitely get to see it on social media when it is done, even if she doesn't get to see it finished in the stream. So yay! I'm glad she likes it. Mushrooms are one of those things, by the way, that like I think I started liking them because I started seeing cottage core stuff. And then I was like, oh mushrooms are cute and cool. So that's like how I started liking them. Now, like, every time I see something with mushrooms, I just get really excited. So, that was why when I was listening to the one episode of The Adventure Zone with the mushroom forest, I was, like, instantly just had this picture. Like, again, this forest that I'm drawing here is not the same forest, but I just took the concept of cool glowing mushrooms and then decided to do my own little thing with that concept because like I'm a big fan of thinking about different worlds and things like that yes cottage core cottage core is definitely delightful I love cottage core so much that's an aesthetic like even before cottage core was like a popular thing on the internet I was always drawn to that kind of thing and like I didn't even I grew up in farm country but we always lived in suburbs and things 
So I didn't have as much exposure. Like, I did go to some 4-H club things. Like, I didn't participate, but I would go to some of the events because I did live in Wisconsin. So I was exposed to stuff like that. And then, even, like, once we moved to Florida, I still really loved that stuff, even when I was a kid still. I loved the aesthetic of it and loved the just really calming because that was probably around the time that I started noticing like anxiety type symptoms so it was really calming for me to to picture things or picture scenes from things like uh, the Beatrix Potter stories and stuff uh, one time like when we were evacuating from a hurricane uh, I think it was I'm pretty sure it was Hurricane Ivan um, that was a long time ago it was, I think it was like 10 years old when that happened but we were evacuating from Hurricane Ivan, we were coming, we lived in uh, the Panhandle of Florida at the time, and my grandparents all lived in Central Florida, and the hurricane was heading right towards us and not towards them, so everyone was like, we're going to go visit your grandparents, that's where we're going to evacuate, but on the way down here, like, I was really anxious, because I was old enough to understand that, like, this was a hurricane, and like, bad things could happen to our house or things like that it was expected to be pretty bad so i was anxious understandably and like one of the books i had with me to read because it's like seven hour car ride to get from the panhandle to central florida so like one of the books i had to read was a book of beatrix potter stories and i i read a lot of those stories and a lot of characters that I really love, like uh, Miss Tiggy Winkle and people like that, I developed a lot of those characters, I think, on that car ride. Because I'd always, I'd always loved the stories and stuff, but I started on that car ride, like, picturing, like, ooh, what if I lived in that world that they live in? And it always just struck me as, like, a really calming and peaceful world. So I always really enjoyed that. And I was like thinking like, yeah, if I lived in a world like that, then I would feel safe and comfortable. And it was just really calming. So I think that's kind of where my love of the cottage core aesthetic really came from. Because I started viewing like all the fields and little chill kind of farm areas and stuff like that. I started viewing it as a very comforting place. Which is why now, for example, like I love Sturdy Valley so much. So, Cottage Core is very delightful, and I'm gl I'm glad that it's like a more popular thing now because it means there's more content like that, and it has a name, which makes it easier to find. Cause like before it was a thing, it was me just going on Google and being like, pretty farm pictures. But it wasn't like a whole aesthetic, so it was it was harder to find stuff that ha that was cottagecore but now it's like, it has a name and it's a popular aesthetic so i can just go online and i might just stumble across cottagecore stuff i'm not even trying to and i can then be like "Ooh, this is cool so mushrooms are definitely a cute and cool part of that and mushrooms are also interesting because like what you see above the ground with a mushroom isn't most of the mushroom. What you see above the ground with a mushroom is actually the like the fruit of it. There's actually a way bigger structure for a mushroom that lives under the ground that's a system of basically roots and stuff. And the only reason that it makes a mushroom sprout above the ground is so that it can spread the spores and breed, kind of like how uh, any fruit producing plant, like an apple tree, let's say. You think about the tree part as being the underground part of the mushrooms. And you think about the apple as being the mushroom itself. That's basically how mushrooms work. And that's how they spread the spores so they can continue reproducing and making more mushrooms. I forgot what it's called or where it is, but like one of the biggest living organisms on the planet is a system of mushroom roots, I think, under the ground. And it covers a huge number of acres. I can't remember where that is or what that is, but I do know that I've heard of that.
But yeah, I love anything that has mushrooms on it. Mushrooms are pretty good as far as a food. They're not my favorite food for a lot of types of them. They do definitely add to a lot of things. I really love portobellas. I'm not really so much a fan of just like the raw button mushrooms. Or the white mushrooms like you get at the grocery store. Not button mushrooms. Um, I'm not so much a fan of those. Admittedly, I haven't had a lot of other types of raw mushrooms. But I know there's some that have more unique flavors than the ones that we've tended to buy. And I do like mushrooms on pizzas and stuff like that. But yeah, a lot of cottagecore stuff's really soothing and relaxing because, like, I like thinking about, like, oh yeah, like, imagining this kind of secondary little world where everything is, everything is just chill and nice and relaxing and pretty, and that's kind of, like, kind of the basis for my, like, internal kind of happy place that I have which is kind of it's kind of when I formed it is that time we were evacuating and I was like this aesthetic is very calming and I'm like that that's what this internal world would look like so because of that that's basically like when my therapist had been like picture a happy place and she was like come up with a place and I was like I've had a place since I was 10 I have that down. I know exactly what it looks like. So, because of that, like, it is a, just a really nice and calming thing. And, like, kind of the inspiration for this picture is, like, okay, so what if there was, like, this cool mushroom place? And you could go live there. And just, it would be really calm and peaceful and quiet. And, like, people that you were friends with, you would hang out with them, but, like, other people wouldn't bother you. And there wouldn't be a bunch of expectations on you. You could just chill and vibe in this cool, glowing mushroom forest and live in a little cottage. So, that would be neat. You will have to make the mushroom risotto. I have admittedly never had mushroom risotto. I feel like at some point I've had risotto... But I don't think I've had, like, I don't, I don't think when I had risotto it was like true risotto. I think it was kind of like either, I mean, I might have had risotto at a restaurant at some point. I don't remember if I did. And if somebody in my family, like, made the risotto, I don't think they ever sat and stirred it for as long as you're supposed to stir it. So it might have theoretically, I may have had, like, risotto type things, but I don't think I've had true risotto because I know you stir the rice for a long time and it makes the starch come out and do stuff. But that sounds really good. Because I think, like, I like the flavor of mushrooms a lot. I just, the texture of raw ones sometimes is kind of spongy and weird. But cooked mushrooms are good. But that's not, that sounds really good. Especially because I do like rice, like, a lot of rice is a good versatile food and I'm pretty sure it's the arborio rice that you use for risotto which I've seen that in my workplace numerous times and I know what it looks like I know there's also a type of rice called Valencia but I it looks similar to the risotto rice but it's not the same thing it's just kind of a smaller grain But yeah, living, living in a little forest of mushrooms would be cool and relaxing. And, like, you could go for walks at night and there would just be, like, your pathway would be guided by the mushrooms. And there wouldn't be anything dangerous there. So you could just freely walk. And just, just enjoy being out in the glowing mushrooms. And it would be really pretty. At some point after I draw all the colors on this, then I'm going to I'm going to smear it around to kind of blend the colors with my fingers. And again, that's something that 
there might be a more formal way you're supposed to do that than me being like, I'm just going to smear the mushroom colors around with my fingers. But, too bad. My way will work. Yeah, there's That's the thing with a lot of art techniques. I'm like, I'm just going to smear it around my hands. And I feel, I feel like if you went to an art class, there's probably like some special tool or something. You're not probably just supposed to smear it around with your hands. But like, I don't care. <laughs> the result will still be cool. One thing nice about pastels, as opposed to other types of things, is the fact that you can smear them around and you kind of blend them. You can blend paint. You can, you can obviously with like pencils and stuff, draw different colors and kind of shade them together. But you can't, like, you can't actually mix the colors in like colored pencils or regular crayons or stuff like that. Exactly. If the art technique works, I'm going to use it. <laughs> nope. Nobody's going to judge it. They're going to look at the end result and they're going to be like, oh, that's nice. And they're not going to see me with the pastels smeared all over my hands. I'm the kind of person that when I'm making art stuff, I do tend to, I tend to get messy with the art stuff. The number of times, just even me making it, the resin experiments I've made so far, because soon I'm going to do resin stuff, the number of times that I have accidentally touched the resin while it was wet, or the first time I made resin stuff, and I was like, yeah, I'm just going to, I am i don't need to wear gloves, I'm, I'm not going to make a mess, and like two minutes into it, I had resin on my hands, and it was drying up, and my hands were going to be permanently resined. And I'm like, eh, I should probably put, I'll, I'll put a glove on. But I, at that point, was like, I, I only need to put one glove on. I don't need two gloves. You need two gloves. You don't. Don't, don't make resin with just one glove, please. Don't, don't be like me in that respect. Because I got resin on my other hand somehow. Resin tends to get everywhere, at least when I am making it. So I, I was just like. Okay, from now on, when I make resin, I will wear two gloves. But then when I was like, I'm going to take the resin stuff out of the mold once it was dry. One thing hadn't dried yet, and I got resin on my hands again. Basically, the resin was very devoted to getting on my hands one way or another. And I was just like, alright, well, that, that's okay. Everything will be okay. Because, <laughs> like, the resin, I didn't get a huge amount on my hands. And I'm... It's probably not the best thing you get on your skin. Kind of like getting super glue on your skin. But it's not going to like hurt you probably. Like I don't, don't do it. But if you happen to do it, like your, your skin will get rid of the resin at some point. Kind of like getting nail polish on your skin. Like you're not supposed to put nail polish on your skin obviously. But if you do, it will come off. Because your skin is greasy and not designed for that. So, trying to figure out exactly what to do. I'm probably just, because I'm almost done with the coloring part. I'm trying to think about what color. The house will probably be kind of warm colors. Because it's not glowing. But the moon is glowing. So I want to kind of use the warm colors. Because I'm going to smear all this around. I also have a little dark outline on it. And then... Maybe... Oops. Who oh, no. knew? All right, well, that pastel is somewhere and I do not know where it went. That is also being an artist. If you're an artist and you've never, oh, there it is. If you've never dropped your art supply somewhere weird where you can't get it, you, I don't really think you're an artist yet. Because uh, <laughs> the number of times I've 
lost art supplies and had to buy more because I lost them in my house. Broke art supplies, dropped them weird places, found them under weird things in my house. Fun things like that. The number of times that's happened is a lot of times. Okay, so I think I think the house is kind of multicolored. So I'm just going to kind of use all the colors in various places in the house to get the vibe across. And I do wish I had a purple pastel, but I don't, so too bad. Um, and I'll draw the windows and stuff after I'm done coloring it. Some like little grass kind of up against it. But yeah, that's I like pastels because I can mix them. Okay, so just trying to I'm gonna color the pastels on the mushroom stones. One good thing about pastels, if you ever put the wrong color down, you're like, oh no, that looked terrible. You can also scrape it up. I, I love any art supply that's kind of forgiving. Like, paint can be forgiving. You can paint over paint, if nothing else. I also will say, as an artist, having to edit your mistakes is valid. And I've been making art for a long time, and there's still so many times that I'll be like, I'm making art, and I'll mess up on something. And I'll be like, well, when I edit it in Photoshop, I'll get rid of that. <laughs> Just because my art looks pretty when you're looking at it doesn't mean that it started out pretty or even looked pretty when I was done with it. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you like it. It it came out mostly the way I pictured it in my mind, which is when I make something usually all I can hope for. Because again, me being like, oh yeah, I can, I can make this art. It will look like this. It doesn't actually look like that in real life. And I'm like, or it's something impossible to make. But this is, this is coming out the way I want it to look. So thank you glad you like it. So I'm trying to because I have I have pastels on my hands. I'm trying to blend the mushrooms to kind of give some shadow without making them look weird and smeary. Also, when you're blending pastels, unless you want to have to keep cleaning your hands, something I usually can't be bothered to do. Um you should start blending the lightest colors first. So in this, I'm not going to start blending the sky. The sky is going to be the last thing I blend. I'm just trying to blend the edges of the mushrooms. Because then you really, like, finish it when you blend it. Because you can also, like, put down other colors. Like, if something's too dark, I could layer some light color onto it and, like, blend it in. Okay. Pastels, it's important to make sure you're not smearing colors where you don't want them. It's very easy to do that. Because if your hand has that color on it. But like this, I accidentally smeared some color on it. So I'm going to scrape up some of the pastel that came out wrong. And then put down some other pastel. But pastels are fun to work with. And sometime what I want to do here soon is now I now I've figured out at least kind of how to stream. I want to do a stream where I'm doing art stuff for like stickers and stuff that I'm making. Because a lot of times I'll sit down and do a session with that. And I do want to I do want to figure out how to stream art digitally on my computer, I just have to sit down and be like, okay, but what do I want to make when I do that? Another art tip is if you're drawing stuff in real life, it is helpful to put a sheet down. Like I have this cardboard below because most surfaces are not perfectly flat. My kitchen table is very, very old. It is very bumpy. We have done a lot to it. 
Um, I have done a lot of art on it. It's not very smooth for drawing. It makes drawings look bumpy and weird. So having a smooth surface, like a lot of times what I'll do, I'll take an old magazine and just put my paper on the back of that. That's really helpful for drawing. That's one of my favorite drawing surfaces. It's really nice and smooth, but not too soft. That you can't draw your stuff. Okay. trying to blend it more on the side because like blending some more darker colors in with it and also when you have pastels they don't smear that much but like do be aware of where your hand is because if I have dark colors in my hands and I smear it it's gonna be smeary but like yeah this like I just scraped off part because it got too dark that's one thing I like about pastels they're a little bit more forgiving than some art materials like a sharpie if you draw it with a sharpie that's how it's gonna look unless you edit it in Photoshop. But like pastels, like if I mess up on it, I can be like, oh, that's okay. Okay. I almost got the blending done. Okay. So I'm gonna blend a little house. It's also just kind of satisfying to just kind of smush the pastels with your fingers. You just see as like the house is coming together. And it's looking cooler than when it's just pastels smeared together. Okay. So now I think I'm going to blend it around the mushrooms first. I don't want to have too much color on my fingers. But I do want to blend it so it looks like one cohesive image. That's the nice part about blending. Rather than it like having all the holes and stuff. Making it look like one kind of dreamy, kind of blurry image. But I'm really pleased with how this is coming out. So that's one cool thing about creating anything, whether you're an artist or a writer or a baker or a photographer or a musician or anything else. It's really cool to, like, you have a picture in your mind of something, and because you're a creator, you can figure out how to make that real. You take something that's just a thing that you've pictured, and you make it into something real that people can see and enjoy. That's really cool. You take something which is, like, thought, which is a thing, technically an electrical impulse in your brain, but it's not like a, an actual thing. And you're making something tangible that then you can share with others beyond just like telling them about it. Like I could have an idea and I could tell somebody and they could picture the same thing I was picturing, but there's a difference between that and like being like, hey, I have this idea for a picture and now because I made it into a real thing, people can see it. They can see what I was picturing. That's the cool thing about being a creator in general. Like, one of the best things about creating any kind of art, it's like, you're making something, putting in the world that didn't exist. And even if your thing isn't, you know, the first thing of that type, like, for example, think about how many treasure hunting stories have been told in the whole history of the world. Anybody who tells the treasure hunting stories, not a brand new story but it's a different take on it because everybody's story is going to be a little bit different and you're still creating something that version of that story has never existed in the world before and you're making it real which I think is pretty cool so really just blending you know and if there's anything I want to fix like 
can always put more pastel down and then smear it. But yeah, definitely want to do more art streams. This has been a lot of fun because like usually when I'm drawing, no one sees it until it's done. It's me sitting at the kitchen table at like 10 p.m. And then being like, oh yeah, I'm drawing such and such things. But like beyond the fact that if my parents come to the kitchen or my sister is over visiting and then somebody else other than me sees it, like nobody gets to see the process of it. And like my parents don't sit there and like watch me make the stuff. Sometimes I'll be like, they'll come out and they'll be like, oh, what are you making? I'll be like partway through the process. But it's been a lot of fun with this, being able to show everybody this process. Thank you. I'm glad you like the haziness. That's one thing I like about pastels, like they have a very dreamlike quality to them. And when you add the haziness, it like really finish the, it finishes the image beyond just like, oh, I drew something with a crayon. Cause like a cool smeary crayon. Which I think is especially good for magical scenes. But thank you. Cause I wanted this to look kind of surrealistic and dreamlike. Because you think about like, if this was a real scene, the fact that the moon is lighting the stuff somewhat, but a lot of it glows the mushrooms, that would be kind of a, a colorful but soft, hazy lighting. So. And that's a cool thing too, is like, when you make art, thinking about different mediums you can make the art in, and how that changes like how the art ultimately looks. Because if I would have like, sketched this in straight up color pencil, it would look different, or if I painted it, or if I cut each piece out of construction paper, like each one would be a totally different scene with a different feeling to it. And that's the cool thing too, is like with art, you can be like, I made this thing one time with this material, I'm gonna try it again with a different material. See what it looks like. Pastels are also cool because, like, you know kind of how things are going to turn out, but then we start mixing them, and, like, it's cool kind of seeing what you drew truly come to life as you mix everything. And... All right, now time for the fun part, the big and less careful mixing zone. Oops. Oh well. Ripped paper is no match for my Photoshop. I was kind of worried about that happening because it's just a regular piece of paper and I was like, oh, I'd be fine. But, like I said, the number of times, like, most things that you see, if you look at my art, if you look at my Etsy store, if it was something that involved a physical process, and, I mean, even a digital thing, I probably made some mistakes in it. There's probably something that the physical piece, if, like, you looked at the copies of my house when I finished doing it, there's probably a flaw in it. There's probably something I messed up. And then I just got rid of it in Photoshop. So, you see a pretty end result, but it didn't start out that way. When I finished, there was probably something messed up. And, like, as an artist, I think that is perfectly okay. Obviously if you're making a canvas you have to fix it because people are going to see it. If you're doing something and you're just going to digitize it like there's no reason to worry about it if you actually make a mistake. You can just chill and fix it in Photoshop. Like that's what Photoshop is for. Or whatever other image editing application you use. But yeah. And 
is the thing too is like physical art is cool because different types of paper can have an effect on the thing like I try to use watercolor paper more when I'm doing watercolors because they don't curl up like regular pieces of paper watercolor paper can be kind of expensive so I'm still trying to find a place that has a good deal on it but it is thicker or even using uh, like cardstock cardstock is pretty inexpensive you get it at like Walmart all right now with a non smeary finger that I did not just blend the whole sky with I'm gonna do the moon and then we are almost done with this drawing but I just want to add a few highlights to things so that is what it looks like and because the moon is lighting this isn't showing up that well but it's kind of visible just a little burst of some pale yellow to show the moon lighting especially around the moon just want to make it look like it's glowing a bit more then on the actual mushrooms real quick just gonna add a little bit of highlights especially to the parts of the mushrooms that are the lightest so they're glowing I'm always afraid when I scan images like this, the oil pastel is getting all of my scanner, so I always want to check so it's not like they left a big greasy mark behind and I'm trying to scan something else. And I'm like, why is there a big blue mushroom shaped greasy patch? Because uh, I know they have setting sprays and stuff for uh, pastels and chalks and things like that. I've never personally used one, but I have heard about them in like my art books and stuff. Just want to see if there's anything else. That I need to add. It's mostly just me making sure I like all the blending. I think. Just real quick, I'm gonna add a little tiny bit of definition to the edges, like one edge of the mushroom. And again, it's nice because, uh, if I want to blend, I can blend. I think I'll add really pale green. Just to make sure that, because like when you do blend it, some of the brightness of the colors can go away. So you want to make sure that the Brightness is still there. So you have those nice colors. And on the moon, just a few little a few little bits of orange to add a little bit of texture. So it looks more moon like. And almost done adding those little highlights. Make sure that there's enough shadow on the edges of the mushrooms. Because there are spaces in between, the mushrooms are not as close together as they appear. Like, because all the mushrooms are, you know, like, they're as tall as this house. So they wouldn't, none of the mushrooms would be, like, that close together. Just from, like, how much smaller they get in perspective. Granted, this will probably look different as I scan it. Just considering how my scanner scans things, but... 
it will still look nice. Blend that. All right, we are almost done with this. I'm gonna draw real quick. A little door. Little windows. Make that little house a little home. I don't want to do too much blending on that. I just want to kind of blend blend the roof line a little bit. Add a little bit more yellow. It's glowing in the moonlight. Just kind of, I don't want to blend it, but I just want to kind of flatten out the lines I just drew in it so they look a little hazier too. Alrighty, well, I think that is done then. That is what I wanted it to look like. Yay! I want to show everybody a closer up, closer thing. Oh, hi, Becky. And that is what it ultimately looks like. So, uh, thank you everybody so much for coming to the stream. Uh, at some point, I will scan this and I will put it on Instagram and stuff so people can see it. Um, and I'll put it, like, I'll probably make prints of it and sell them on Etsy and like stickers and stuff like that too. Um, but yeah, thank you everybody so much for coming to my stream. This was a lot of fun. Uh, I don't have like a set in stone day that I want to regularly stream yet, but I do want to make it something I do more regularly. And like today's was just a casual little impromptu stream because I was like, hey, this is something I want to do for a long time. So uh, I'm... I just decided to do it today and just just get it done. Um, so now I don't have to have the hesitation of like streaming being something I've never done before. So I do want to do streaming more regularly. I do want to do streaming, you know, probably like once a week at least. Um, so because of that, there will be more streams. And like next time I will have more of a warning because like now I know how to do it. I will be like, oh, yeah. And like in the morning, I could be like, at this time I will stream. Um, so yeah, I, I am going to do that on a more regular basis and next time it will also be more of a heads up and I will have some of the technical difficulties and stuff. Um, I'll have those things ironed out by that point because there, there was a few difficulties to be the beginning of this, but ultimately it worked out really well and I'm glad I finally did it. Uh, I definitely am going to stream more and, um, uh, and I'll also thank you everybody so much for all the, the nice things. I'm glad everybody really likes how it comes out. I'm really happy with how it came out. So thank you, everybody. I really appreciate everybody coming to my stream. Because I think I think there's been three or four viewers on the stream, which is pretty good for the very first time that I've streamed. So uh, I really appreciate everybody coming out and saying nice things as I make the stuff. And I'm definitely going to stream more. So bye. Thank you.